Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I would like to go over the GAPS Diet Introduction Step 1 so that you know completely what that entails and what to expect. So let's jump in and take a look. So on the GAPS Introduction Diet, we are accomplishing healing of the lining of the gut. We're gonna be sealing up leaky gut and rebuilding that structure that is the insides of our intestines. Stage one of the GAPS introduction diet provides lots and lots of very specific nutrients that help the body accomplish this rebuilding of the gut. In one of my previous videos where I talked about how the GAPS diet works and what's happening in our gut when we need the healing from the GAPS diet, I talked about those little cells called enterocytes. And if you remember, those are constantly being renewed. There's a life cycle of those. They climb up to the top of the villi and then they get older and then die at the top. And so there's a constant cycle of new enterocytes all the time. And this stage one of the introduction diet helps that process happen and gives all the nutrients for that renewal to happen. Okay, a little eating break there for baby, but we'll continue on. So you're gonna notice when we talk about the specific foods that we eat in stage one of the GAPS introduction diet, we're really trying to eliminate fiber and other hard to digest things as much as possible. We want really easy to digest nutrients and things that are gonna be soothing on our digestive system. Oftentimes when we have gut problems, there's places of inflammation in our gut and these nutrients help to soothe that inflammation and heal it. Stage one of the GAPS introduction diet also starts right away with introducing friendly bacteria and different probiotic foods. This is because one of the main things that's happening is rebuilding that balance of friendly bacteria too so that our food can actually be digested and broken down properly. That leads me into another topic which is food intolerances and food allergies. Once our body is actually able to break down food and digest it properly, a lot if not all of food allergies and intolerances will actually be eliminated. So that's really great news. It's really important to go ahead and do the introduction diet before going into the full GAPS diet. You will heal more deeply and more quickly if you do these things in the correct order. If you jump right into the full GAPS diet and you have a lot of health issues to address, oftentimes you won't really be able to address those properly and you'll have lingering issues for a long time. So it's best to go ahead and go through the introduction diet before the full GAPS diet. The time spent on each stage of the GAPS introduction diet is very individual. It really depends on what you're trying to heal, your specific situation. So basically, as you're moving through the GAPS introduction diet steps, if you add in a new food and your symptoms return, that means that not enough healing has taken place and you're not ready to add that food back in. So you need to take it back out, wait a few weeks, and then try it again. And we'll talk more about that in future videos about when to move on to the next stage and how you know when you need to stay in one stage longer and all of that. One really interesting thing to keep in mind is if you get sick with a flu, like a stomach bug or even food poisoning or something like that, some kind of digestive upset, it can be really, really helpful and beneficial to go back to the GAPS introduction diet for a few days and that will help your gut heal from that. So when we have leaky gut, it means we have a damaged intestinal wall as well as abnormal gut flora. So what happens when we have this leaky gut is that our food isn't digested properly and then the food particles that are not broken down properly can go through this leaky gut wall into the bloodstream in not the right way and that's when we have food allergies and food intolerances. The immune system reacts to these things once they're into the bloodstream in this improper way. And this is why if you go to be tested for food allergies and food sensitivities and food intolerances and things like that, it can be pretty unreliable. If you have a damaged gut and a leaky gut, when you're tested for these food allergies and things, you're probably gonna show up as reacting to whatever you ate recently. And if you were to go get tested on different days, different foods would probably show up. And that's just because with that leaky gut, whatever you're eating is being improperly digested and being allowed into the bloodstream not properly digested and then your immune system is reacting to it. So rather than trying to figure out what am I sensitive to and then just trying to 
avoid that food and live like that, it's so much better to just heal your gut and then heal those food intolerances and sensitivities for good and then you'll be able to eat and digest foods properly and not worry about it anymore. I will mention that if you suspect that you have a real allergy, like an anaphylactic type of a reaction to a food to do the sensitivity test before introducing that type of food as you go through the CAPS introduction diet. The way that you do that is you put a drop of the food, if it's a solid food then you'll mix it with some water to make it into a liquid food. You put it on the inside of your wrist, you can cover it with a band-aid to keep it there. You put that before you go to bed at night and then in the morning you look at that spot on your wrist and if there's an angry red reaction, then that means that's something that you should definitely not introduce right now. Wait a long time, do the food, the skin sensitivity test again, later on, way down the road, and then see if it's safe to introduce it then. But for now, don't do it. And if there's no reaction at all for right now, then it's safe to go ahead and try it. All right, so let's talk about the actual foods that we're gonna be eating on the GAPS introduction diet. So the very most important thing, like I said before, is foods full of those nutrients, those building blocks that the body uses to rebuild the gut, to heal the leaky gut, and to make that lining good again. And the foods that contain those nutrients the most are gonna be your meat stock and the different bits of meat off of those meaty bones and the gelatin in the meat stock. Those things are absolutely crucial to the GAPS introduction diet. You do not want to skip those or not eat enough of them. You wanna make sure you're getting plenty of those kinds of foods. So on the GAPS introduction diet, you'll start each day with a glass of water. Don't drink ice water first thing in the morning because that's kind of a shock to your digestive system. This is a noisy baby, by the way. <laughs> But, you, so you start with a glass of water and then take your probiotic at that time. Next, what will be making up a lot of your meals as well as what you'll have in between meals is meat stock. You'll make soup with the meat stock with different vegetables and meats and you can also drink cups of meat stock in between meals as well. The basic idea is to get as much of that meat stock into your body as you can, especially in these very first stages. Remember that that meat stock is the building blocks for cell growth in the gut. It soothes inflammation, and in order for it to be able to do all those things, it needs to be homemade. Don't try to use store-bought broth or um, things like bullion cubes or anything like that. That's not gonna accomplish the same thing at all. It needs to be homemade meat stock. I have a recipe and a video tutorial that shows you how to make meat stock. It's pretty easy. Once you get used to it, you'll be able to make it very easily and quickly. It keeps in the refrigerator for around a week and then you can freeze it for longer term storage so you can always have some on hand. It's also important to eat bone marrow and you'll get that from the inside of the meaty beef stock bones and I'll be doing a video that shows you how to make that beef stock uh, pretty soon and how to extract the marrow from those bones also. And then the other thing that you're gonna be eating, again, made with that meat stock is soups, different soup recipes. So you'll use lots of different vegetables that are allowed on the GAPS diet right now. You will be doing lots of onions, garlic, celery, carrots, winter squash, things like that. You remove the skins and seeds and anything that looks fibrous, because again, you want everything to be nice and easy to digest so that your gut can absorb those nutrients very easily and not be irritated or anything with fiber. The other thing that's important to introduce right away on this first stage of the introduction diet is the probiotic foods. The first thing that's best to start with is liquid from homemade sauerkraut. Now, dairy is a little bit more complicated. Different people react to that different ways, and that will definitely be something that we want to add next, but it's important to start with that juice from your homemade sauerkraut. And the reason why you start with the liquid and not the actual sauerkraut itself is because the liquid is, again, easy to digest. It's right there. The solid sauerkraut will be a little bit fibrous in the beginning, so we'll add that again in, but start with just the liquid for now. 
when you add the probiotic foods, it's important to start very, very slowly. You don't want to have a strong die-off reaction because once those probiotic foods start going into your gut, healing is gonna start taking place, the bad bacteria are gonna start dying off, and you can feel really yucky if you do this too quickly. So start with a small amount and gradually work up. Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride recommends starting with one or two teaspoons of the sauerkraut liquid for the first few days and then gradually bumping that up every few days your goal is to be adding about a tablespoon of probiotic food to every bowl of soup and every cup of stock that you drink. After you're doing well with the sauerkraut liquid, you can go ahead and add the fermented dairy and you want to go slowly with this. Do the skin sensitivity test like I talked about first to make sure that there's not going to be a reaction. And then depending on your symptoms, you're going to want to go one of two different directions. If you're tending to be dealing with diarrhea, then you're going to want to have something like the homemade yogurt and that's what you'll want to start with. If constipation is your issue, then you're going to want to start with the plenty of the liquid from the homemade sauerkraut for a while. That'll be more beneficial to you at first. And then the dairy that will probably agree with you the most if you're dealing with constipation is going to be the full fat raw sour cream made with kefir culture. And you'll want to start that really, really slowly. Now, the difference between yogurt and kefir on the GAPS diet is that yogurt is a lot more mild and kefir is a lot more aggressive. When you do the sour cream, you'll actually want to do it with homemade yogurt culture first, and then once you're doing well with that, you can gradually change over to sour cream made with kefir grains. So again, just to recap, the if you're dealing with diarrhea, the homemade yogurt is going to be helpful for you. If you're dealing with constipation, then the liquid from the fermented vegetables and high fat dairy, like the homemade raw milk sour cream, is going to be best. The last thing that you're going to be enjoying in this stage one of the GAPS introduction diet is the herbal teas. Mostly ginger and mint leaf are best for healing the gut at this stage, and I have a video that shows you how to make those. I also have videos on how to make homemade raw milk yogurt and homemade raw milk sour cream, and I'll put links to all of those videos below so you can check those out. When you're adding the probiotic foods to your meat stock or soup, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the food is not too hot before you add the probiotic food. That's so that the heat doesn't kill the beneficial bacteria. Okay, and don't feel like you have to be limited when you're just eating meat stock and soup. Remember that there are so many different ways that you can make soup that still fits within this GAPS introduction diet. I have one recipe already that is a GAPS introduction diet stage one chicken soup and I will put a link to that recipe below where you can check that out. I'm going to be making a bunch more videos on variations of different soup recipes that you can have on stage one of the introduction diet so that there's lots of variety that you can have and enjoy and you don't have to feel limited. Okay, I hope that you found that interesting and helpful. I'll put a link below to my blog post where I have this full written article if you want to reference that. And I also wanted to mention that I have a free ebook. It's a GAPS Diet Essential Recipes ebook. It's a free ebook that you can download that has all the recipes that you'll need to know to do the GAPS introduction diet, and there will be a link below where you can grab that. All right, if you found this video helpful and you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with anybody else who you think might find it helpful. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make new videos every week on traditional health wisdom and living a sustainable DIY lifestyle. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.